Hi everybody, I'm Corinne Blackstone and welcome to my craft room. Before we get started, be sure to check out my exclusive Facebook group listed down below. It's a really fun place. You can ask your questions, post your crafts, and just hang out. Plus, getting to know other crafters is always super fun. In today's video, we are going to use some Wallacut Express HTV and Wallacut Puff HTV. These came from Heat Transfer Warehouse and they came out really cool. We're going to make a kind of a varsity letter inspired shirt for your graduate, but you can really make anything that you want to with their vinyl. It's really fun. What I love about it, it was super easy to use. The Express is matte and the Puff is a one step puff and it comes in a ton of great colors. I'm going to link everything down below for you so that you can find what you're looking for, but I'm going to show you how to design this shirt, how easy it is to use with Cricut Design Space. So let's get started. Whatever we would do, we do it just for fun. We're going to make this really fun graduation shirt using some Wallacut HTV and some Wallacut Puff. So I'm really excited to show you this. You can get this from Heat Transfer Warehouse. I'll link everything down below that we're using in our tutorial. We're first going to start off with some text. So I'm going to do class of across like the top arched, and then I want to do 2022 under our letter and then we're going to do kind of a varsity inspired letter patch. So the first thing that we're going to do is put class of and we are we could actually add you know what maybe we could add graduating. Mm, I don't think I like it. We'll just leave it as class of you can kind of play around with your designs figure out what you like and how you want it to look. So I'm just going to make my text first and then we'll kind of play with our fonts and things as we create our design. The next thing I need is a big letter B. That's going to be what we use for our little patch. I'll just make it a little bit bigger. And then the next thing that we need is 2022. Now this can be done on shirts and bags and hats and all sorts of things. I'm going to make a um, baseball style t-shirt with this. Um, in a size large so that'll kind of give us an idea of how big we want to make this. Now we can also capitalize the entire words for class of and see if we like it. We just want to play around a little bit but I do know for my letter B what font I need. So I'm going to go in to my fonts which you can find up in the upper left hand side and I know it's in my system fonts and the one that I'm looking for is called college. So I'm just going to pull that one up and select it. You'll see that it changes over to our letter and very, very simple. Now we do need to make an offset for this so that it looks like a varsity letter. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make mine way big. Um, it's easier to see and you'll see that the offsets actually work a little bit better when you make them big. It's weird how they have it set up, but it does kind of make the offsets a little bit different. If I were to do the same offset with the letter being small, you would see the difference and actually I can show you that. So what I'm going to do, let me go ahead and duplicate and I'll show you the difference because that actually might be something that you guys didn't know. So I'm going to make one small B and we'll kind of leave it about this size. So I'm going to do an offset on our small B and I'm going to do the exact same size offset. So this is a 0.25 offset and then we'll do the same offset on this. So you'll see again, this is 0.25, but now do you see how this one has the holes in the center of the letters like I want it to and this one doesn't? So if you're having trouble where it's not giving you the like holes where you want them or it's just kind of weird, just make it bigger. So I'm going to select the whole design here and I'm just going to slide, slide it back down into a smaller size just so it's out of our way. Now we can recolor this and things like that um, because it'll help you kind of figure out what you want your other font to look like. So what I'm going to do is my puff is a bright blue so I'm going to kind of choose a blue and then I'm going to do the under section in the red that we have. It's going to be really cute. Now, this is definitely like inspired by some friends of mine that are uh, their kids are graduating. So I thought this would be fun. The letter of their school with their school colors. Now we need to choose a font for our class of and a font for our 2022. You can choose any font that you want. It doesn't matter. It's really up to you and how you want it to look. You can choose to use the same font if you want to. If you want to see what that looks like, we can definitely look at that. So there's lots of things, but I'm going to show you a really helpful tool for choosing a font. There is a website called wordmark.it and all you have to do is type in your text of whatever you want your image to say. So in this case, we're using class of and just hit that little arrow button. 
that is going to pull up all of the fonts on your computer. Now, you might need to download an extension for your internet browser so that it can read all of your fonts, but it's totally safe. I've had it for years, and this is the most helpful website when it comes to choosing a font. Now, a cool thing is, too, you can select each font. So if you like a font, just click on it, and you'll be able to compare all the fonts together to see if there's one that you like better than another. But I do find this to be a really great way to choose fonts, and you can see that all of my fonts are represented. There's a little bit of everything in here. Now, there are going to be ads and stuff because this is free, but that's okay. Not really the end of the world. It's fine. Just kind of work around them. So I'm going to go ahead and choose a couple of different fonts, and then we can see which one we like best. Once I have gotten to the bottom and kind of decided if, you know, I've picked out all the fonts I want to take a look at, all I simply need to do is click Filter Selected Fonts. And you'll see here that it brings up the fonts that I have chosen. Now you can kind of go through and if you want to delete ones that you don't like. So I kind of don't think that one's going to work for what I want. And I'm really not feeling like this one maybe. I think that one's going to look a little bit weird with our font. So what we can do too is as we see what we have here, we can go back over to design space and kind of pull those fonts up and look at what they look like with our design. So let's go ahead and see what... Let's start with Playbill, just because I don't think that one's going to look right. So we're going to go ahead and select that. Go over to your system fonts and just search the word play, and it should bring up the Playbill font. Select it and see if you like the look of it. You may not, you might, and sometimes it takes a minute for it to change. I think it's too close to the B style, so I don't think that one's going to work. So you can just go right back over to wordmark.it. I'll go back over here and I'll kind of get rid of it and say, no, you know what, that one wasn't really what I wanted. Let's try Brit Britannic. I think that one looks pretty nice. I kind of want it to be nothing too crazy. I'd like to keep it pretty classy on this shirt. So let's try Britannic. All I do, choose my font, find what I'm looking for. And you can just use the first couple of letters of it and see if that's the font that you want to choose. Now, I think that one actually looks pretty okay. Um, it's a little bit different than the varsity letter, which is what I wanted. So let's see what 2022 looks like with the Britannic font, because sometimes they're, um, the, the like numbers are a little bit weird. But I actually think those look really good. Now, we are going to be using a large t-shirt. So I usually go about a 9.5 inch wide design. So for this, because I've got a couple different sections of it, I'm going to make a little template just so I can get a good look at what it's going to look like in my square of size. So I'm just gonna open up a square and I'm just gonna change it to be 9.5 wide. I'm gonna click send to back and our shirt is actually gray. So I'm just gonna leave it gray. I'm gonna make my words red to match my um, class, my little like B, cause I think that'll be super duper cute. So we'll go ahead and do that. And I will say design space is being just a touch slow today with my choices. Um, so if you're having trouble with it, like not choosing something, just kind of exit out and go right back in. Totally fine. Now I think this looks pretty cute. So what I'm gonna do, I think I kind of wanna arch this word a little bit because I think that it would look nice, but I don't wanna do too much of a curve, just a little. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up my curve option. Now remember, if you ungroup the words or anything like that or weld, you will not be able to use the curve option. So you can't ungroup or anything if you use curve. So again, I don't want to do a big curve. I just want to do a small one. And I think that looks kind of weird. So I don't think I want to curve it. The problem is the word of looks very off. So I think I'm just going to leave it regular. I was going to curve it, but I don't think I want to now. I'm going to go ahead and extend this and make it larger so that it kind of fits within our design. And then I'm going to move the 2022 down a little bit. And I do want to make this be pretty big. So what I want to do is I'm going to select both of my items and I'm going to group them. That way it holds the B and the offset together when I go to move it around on my design. So I'm going to go ahead and expand this. I do want this B to be <laughs> to be pretty large um, because I do want it to stand out. I want this to be the main focus of the design. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of make it a little bit bigger. I actually really like that and I think it looks pretty nice. The next thing that I want to do before I do anything else with my design is I want to make sure that everything is centered. So I'm going to select the group that is my B. 
I'm also going to select 2022 and the word class of. Use the align button and I want to align them right here where it's horizontally and you'll see that it will center everything up so that it's all nice and even. Now again, I can expand this a little bit because it is a little bit under the nine and a half. So I usually stick about nine and a half, maybe a little bit bigger. But that is the design. I think it looks really good. Now, the next thing that I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and ungroup my bees because I wanna make sure I can move this blue bee out of the way so that I can attach all of our red pieces together. And I'll show you why. If I don't attach my red pieces, watch what happens. You'll see that once you go to your mat, it moves everything around. Now that's okay if you don't mind having to recenter everything on your shirt and deal with having to piece everything together. But I don't wanna do that because I'm gonna have to try to measure and make sure everything's exactly where it was. And for me, that's just not kinda how I want to do things. Now the other thing I will say that I noticed is the L and the A are a little bit close here. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna ungroup this really quick and I'm just gonna take my L and just nudge it over a hair. I'm just moving it so that it's just a touch further away from that A and we have a little bit of space there. I didn't like them touching. I thought that looked a little bit weird. Once you're happy with everything on your design, you can go ahead and select the entire red section. Then what you wanna do is use the word attach. What attach does is it basically holds everything in place. So think of attach like using a piece of tape to put something onto a piece of paper. It's gonna keep it on that piece of paper right where you put it. Group is only for using on the actual canvas here when you're designing. That's gonna hold everything so like when you move multiple colored items, they all stay together so you can move them a little bit easier. Now we are ready to cut, but we need to do one more thing, which is my little trick thing, because I hate trying to remember to mirror when I go to my next screen. So I prefer to use the flip option in the canvas. Flip is kind of in the center of the screen, right at the top, right under where it says flip next to a line. Click that and then you wanna flip it horizontally. You're gonna do that for both of the designs. So you're gonna do it for the blue and for the red. The blue is gonna be our puff HTV and the red is just gonna be the regular HTV. You can't layer on top of puff, but you can layer puff on top of a regular HTV. So it's really fun, really easy, and this is gonna be so cute. Now you'll see that when we click make it, you'll see that everything is held in place. Now that the red is exactly the way we want it to be, and it'll be much easier to lay this out on our shirt. So let's go ahead and get ready to cut. All we'll need to do now is hit continue. The first thing that we're going to cut is the wall of cut regular HTV. That just cuts on the everyday iron-on setting, really easy to do. And the best part is the puff cuts on the exact same setting. I'm gonna take you over to the machine so that you guys can see how we're going to load our HTV. We're gonna get it all weeded and then we're gonna be ready to put it on our shirt. So over here at the machine, we're gonna start with our red and this is the Walla Cut Express Bright Red and we're just gonna load this onto our mat. So this goes with the color side down, so shiny side down, although both sides on this are pretty shiny. You can always just double check by peeling up a corner to see which side is your carrier sheet side. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this pressed onto my mat. Again, this cuts on the everyday iron-on setting. I'll go ahead and load this in, and I always just leave my roll kind of hanging. It can just hang off the table, no big deal. I'm gonna let this cut, and then we'll move on to the puff. So our next product that we're gonna use is the puff. Now this one is a little bit different. So your carrier sheet side is actually super matte and your side that you're gonna put up is super shiny. So that's something to keep in mind when you're doing this. Now this is their neon blue. I am gonna take the sticker off because I don't want it to cut on that sticker. And this is going to go with the color side down. So I know they have a white version as well. You'll just need to make sure to look for the matte side. So the matte color side is gonna go down. And we're gonna go straight down on to our matte here. Just press it down. And again, I'm just gonna leave it fully rolled. Now I will say because of the style of this, it does not stick to your matte very well. This matte is really sticky and you can see that it's not sticking at all. 
So what I'm going to end up having to probably do is tape this down because you can see I'm like pressing pretty hard and it's not wanting to stick at all. So let's grab some painter's tape and get this tape down. So from time to time you may have a material that's just not going to stick to your mat no matter how sticky your mat is. This mat is not not sticky. You just saw it work on the other one so it's just the vinyl and some of them are like this where they don't like to stick to a mat. Totally okay. Just grab some painter's tape and I always tape it a little bit higher than the mat itself so I run this up to the top a little bit and want to make sure that we put this down on the sides as well. And then we also want to make sure we get this side so that it doesn't move while we're trying to cut anything. Just get that all taped down. Now this extra little overlap, I'm just going to fold over. I'll do the same at the top, just kind of fold it over so it doesn't get in the way. And we're good to go. We can go ahead and cut this now. Like I said, a lot of times, especially with these matte type styles, they just don't like to um, go in. That's okay. It's no, not a big deal. We just tape it down. But again, my mat, perfectly sticky, so I wouldn't worry. We'll go ahead and get this cut out. This is the puff, and then we can weed everything. Now I am just going to check my cut, although I think it did fine. I'm going to grab my pin pen and just give it a quick check. Looks like it cut beautifully. We'll go ahead and unload, and then what I'll do is I'll get all my painter's tape off of my mat and we can weed everything out. going to get the heat press all set up. We're going to set it at 275 for about 10 seconds. So this um, first HTV presses between 250 and 302 for about 5 seconds, but the puff presses at 275 for 10. So that 275 will be just fine for the wall cut, and then we will put the puff on top and layer that. So we're going to go over to the heat press and get this all pressed on. So we're ready to press the first layer. We're just gonna press this really, really quickly, but one thing I wanna point out, actually two things. Number one, I do have a pressing pillow under my shirt. Um, this is highly recommended when using a heat press. It allows any of the seams to go under the pressing pillow so that you're not actually pressing the seams so that you get a much better press on your design. The other thing I wanna point out is I do have a Teflon sheet attached to my heat press. I always have it here and it's just attached with some magnets. That way I never have to worry about trying to remember it. So let's go ahead and press this. Again, we're just going to press this super quick, just for a few seconds, and then pull it right up. And then this is a warm peel product, meaning as soon as you're done pressing, you can peel that carrier sheet off. Now this next part that we're going to do is our puff. So what I want to do is I'm going to just kind of make sure this is all flat again, because it does tend to get a little bit wrinkled when you pull off the carrier sheet. And I'm going to place my design onto my shirt. And I want to make sure I get it good and even, so it's going to slide around a little bit right now, because I just want to get it where I want it. All right, I'm pretty happy with the placement. Mm, I'm not, I like. <laughs> so it's okay, you can move it. That's what I love about HTD. It's very forgiving before you press, so you can just kind of figure out exactly where you want it. Then, once you're happy with this, this is going to press for 10 seconds, and then this is also a hot peel. So let's go ahead and press this. Give it a couple seconds, 10 whole seconds. It seems like a long time when you're waiting to reveal your design, but it's so worth it. As soon as it's done, go ahead and pull your press and then go ahead and pull off the carrier sheet and you're gonna see it puff almost instantly. Now it's gonna give it a second or two and it will puff even more as it cools a little bit. I'm gonna let this cool off and then I'll take you guys over to the table so we can really see how this looks. Here's the shirt all finished. This came out so cute and this is really soft. It doesn't feel super heavy on the shirt, which I love, and it is matte. So that is a really nice product. And then this is the puff, the blue, and I think it came out really, really cool. This is a one-step puff, so it puffs automatically as soon as you're done pressing it. But I really think the colors are super vibrant. This was super easy to do, and I love the kind of look of the varsity letter. These are very trendy right now, so these would be a great option for graduation gifts. Um, things that you could make for a group of kids, you know, something really fun, but you can really use the Puff HTV in so many different ways. 
I hope you guys learned a little something and be sure to check out my links down below where you can find all the products that I used in this video today. I hope you guys have a wonderful day and as always, happy crafting. Thank you.